Hey everybody, Kelly Ritchie here. I wanted to take some time this evening and uh, make a recording and touch on some things that um, I see as repetitive issues with students. Little things like tuning your guitar. Often if I'm doing a Skype lesson, um, we dive into a guitar lesson, I'll ask a student to play something and the guitar is out of tune. Um, it's critical the second you pick up your guitar that that's the first thing you do is tune. And I remember when I was first learning how to tune, I'd grown up playing the piano, I had a well-developed ear, but I had to learn to listen on my guitar uh, because the timber between the different strings, because you know some are wound and some of them are not wound, the bassier strings. So there's some things that I just wanna point out. Uh, I happen to be in drop D tuning, so I'm gonna take advantage of uh, talking about this tuning, then putting it back in standard tuning. Also, one thing that I do is I watch the jewelry that I have on, especially for the style that I play. If you'll notice, I never have anything on my right hand. I always take my pinky ring off, uh, and I always wear my peace ring. I've had that for a long time, and uh, it's a solid gold peace ring, and there's a story behind it, but that's another, <laughs> that's for another lesson. Um, so I have an app on my iPhone and it looks like a, a Boss Chromatic Tuner. And uh, I don't wanna get the light glare on here, but it's just, um, it says Chromatic Tuner on it and it looks like a little Boss foot stomp pedal. And it's really good. I also discovered recently that Alexa just sitting right behind my shoulder, uh, will give me uh, guitar uh, pitches so I can tune my guitar. So that's cool. But with a guitar tuner that has um, a needle on it, that way you can see if you're sharp or flat. Now, there's some tricks to tuning. Uh, one, you want things to be quiet so you can hear. And you want to let the string fully ring. So I usually pick the string with my thumb because I don't want the attack of a pick. I want a good fat sound and I'll make sure all the other strings are quiet. And I don't want to hit it so hard that it pulls it out of tune like and see how I'm taking my thumb and just falling off of that string down to the next string. I'm not doing that just then I'm watching the needle and if it were uh, sharp I'd want to come under the note and back up to it because if you just pull down sometimes the the string just physically can slip so you want to make sure that you tune up and that the sometimes I'll push some of the tension out so it's up and it's and it's locked in tune Now I can check with the harmonic because at the 12th fret, the harmonic is an octave higher. And sometimes that frequency cuts through. Okay, now uh, when I put it up in standard tune here in a minute, I'll uh, show you how the harmonics work from string to string. Now I'm gonna drop D. All of my strings are in standard tuning, except this used to be an E string. I tuned it down a whole step, which is two frets. So like here's an E, E flat, D. So two frets down is a whole step, and that goes from an E string down to a D. So I can hear that just a little bit off. Now, when I use harmonics, there's a, it, it will be like a, it, if it's perfectly even wave, if it's a flat wave, then it's in tune. But if there's fluctuation, that means it's out of tune. So,
One cool thing about a drop D uh, bar chord is just a straight line. At least on these top three strings, my fourth, fifth, and sixth strings. Because that used to be my power chord, but the string has been tuned down two frets, so I've got to move this up two frets to compensate for it being tuned down two frets. And you can take your D form, and as you move it up, you can let that D string open as a drone. Here, my first finger is on the fifth fret as I move that form up. And my pinky here, let me switch over here to this camera angle. My pinky here is covering because that note isn't. That note sounds okay. But mainly, I just want I don't let it overtake things, my high E string, I'm okay. But if I did this in slow motion, I'm constantly getting in touch with that string to kind of mute it out so it doesn't, so I can keep the momentum going, but just kind of dampen this a little bit. Also, every time I touch this bottom string, my hand knows how far away everything is. So I'm constantly, there's a lot of uh, finish <laughs> off of all my guitars. Well, if they have a pit guard on them, it's not. Let me put it over here on this where it's... It's a fun tuning to play with. I get out of drop D I'll just let you know that there's um, a few songs in the classroom you might want to try feeling under has a drop D driving song so if you like that drop D sound um, you can check that out in the classroom drop D is a lot of fun um, I'll do a lot of ambient stuff with it where I turn on uh, ping pong delays uh, I have a looper uh, built into my pedal board I also have my pedal board synced when I'm in the studio to my Ableton Live, so any loop or beat that I pull up, it will trigger my looper, which is a Pigtronics, to remain in tune. So if I, you know, have a beat that I'm playing to and I'm uh, recording a track, then everything's gonna sync, sync up mm -hmm. that I, you know, put on that looper. So that's a, a different lesson that I, I wanna start getting into a number of things that I do in the
but just kind of giving some uh, an overview of some of the things in the on on the channel and some things that I find people doing as far as just getting their guitar in tune when I ask them to tune and I watch. Um, a lot of times they'll, uh, now I'm gonna put it in standard tuning, so this will be a good opportunity. Uh, I'm gonna bring this up a whole step. I'm basically tuning it to my fifth string. And notice I'm using harmonics. Now, I can play from the fifth fret off my sixth string to my um, fifth string open, fifth fret of my fifth string to my fourth string open, fifth fret of my fourth string to my third string open, fourth fret of my third string to my B string or my second string open and then back up to my fifth fret on my second string to my E string open. Now that's kind of a coarse way to tune. Uh, these would be harmonics. Watch my, watch my right hand. I'm using my thumb here. I don't, I don't have to be in a hurry if I I hit that note and remove my finger. So just practice doing that first before you try to, you know, put the notes together in tune. Just I'm I'm just touching the top of the string. Or I'm touching the string right above the fret, not on top of the I'm not pushing down, but I'm you know, right over the fret, just touching the string. And with my thumb, and then with my third finger, uh, let me get on this angle here. With my third finger, I'm on my seventh fret of the next string. Fifth fret, seventh fret. As I get to the the smaller strings or the thinner strings, I have to to pick with more intention. I'll switch to this angle. But a lot of times when students are uh, tuning, they'll get in a rush and like they'll they'll mute what they're the string that they're trying to tune to so just take your time get control over what you're doing do it intentionally okay uh, but always tune your guitar before you start and then check it with the tuner uh, practice tuning with your ear tuning with you know the course adjustment and with harmonics, use your tuner, knock it out a little bit. Practice that because, you know, when you when you go to play with people, uh, you know, we have electric tuners now. So it's, you know, when I was first starting to play, you know, you had to have some big expensive guitar, you know, uh, repair shop to have a strobe tuner. You know, there were hundreds of dollars. That's just not the case anymore. So use your tuner but also use your ear use your tuner to make sure that your ears in check okay um now one thing that i do want to point out is that the the b string the second string there's not a harmonic like you know you don't just keep doing the same thing all the way down but on your seventh fret of your sixth string that's a b note and that harmonic matches your b string open and this string here, it's almost like if it's perfectly in tune, it'll sound a little sharp when you play a root six or an E form chord. Um, I'm sorry, 
sorry, it'll sound a little flat if you play an E form chord, and then it'll sound a little sharp if you play your uh, A form, your root five bar chord. So you've kind of got to get that depending on how well your guitar is set up. I have an old uh, 65 Strat, and uh, sometimes I call it a 63, 65. The serial number is a 65, but the neck's a 65, the body's a 63. So if you hear me saying one thing and the other, I, I, I I tend to uh, waffle on what I call it, but it's officially uh, 65. That is a really, it's set up beautifully and it plays like butter, but every guitar has some, some quirks to it. The, whether the radius of the neck is rounded, I have really, I have jumbo frets. So, um, and I have, and I have a heavy right hand, but not a heavy left hand. So I have to tune it, fine tune it to the way that I play it, okay? So uh, really work with tuning your guitar, all right? And uh, so that's one thing you should always do when you start out. 